Hey everyone, my name's Brad. I'm just going to do a quick little review here on the Thorn Nomad Touring Bicycle. Now before I go any further, it's nice and muddy because it's a well used bicycle. This has about 40,000 kilometers on it. I've cycled to it in Europe, Australia, North America, Central America, and right now I'm in Ecuador in South America. So this is kind of a review from somebody who's actually used the bike the way it was designed to be used. All right, let's start off with the frame. It's a nice heavy duty steel frame, which is really heavy uh, as far as a bicycle touring setup goes. It also has a roll off hub and down in here, there's an eccentric bracket that basically is what you use to adjust the, the chain or loosen the chain when you need to take the rear wheel off to change the tire. Now I have a setup where I'm only using the rear panniers here with a rack bag. Now if you want to know a little bit more about the setup that I have, which is a lightweight setup, hit subscribe because on the next video I'm going to go through the gear that I've got and uh, Considering it weighs 20, 25 kilograms, that might be of interest to some people. Now, back to the frame. Roll-off setup, eccentric bracket, and I'm running front suspension, which I would not recommend. I put it on here with the, the, uh, the kind of thought that it'd be a good idea to run it because I like to spend time on nice little rough dirt roads rather than highways. Here's the thing. When you're running panniers, you really cannot go too fast on dirt roads anyway. So the advantage that the suspension is going to have, absorbing a lot of the, uh, the, the bumps, you really don't get that advantage. Considering it weighs about two kilograms, it's just really dead weight. And I'm going to change it back very soon for the um, standard forks that come with the Thorn Nomad. Now I'm also running a bike stand on this which basically voids my warranty. According to the manufacturer I'm not allowed to use it as it might damage the frame. Now I've used it for 40,000 kilometers, haven't had a problem, but just keep that in mind. I highly recommend them rather than lay my bike down, especially if you find yourself in mud, but the choice is yours. Right, let's talk about the roll-off hub. The roll-off hub is one of those things that are said to be indestructible. Now, I actually personally know a couple of people who have broken their roll-off hub, so they can be broken. Now, I am running at the moment 34 teeth on the front and the standard 17 on the back. Now, on my first tour, when I took it out of the uh, um, showroom, I was running 40 on the front and cycling around Europe. And that was kind of okay but I realized that the biggest problem that I had was going up hills, and I spent just a ridiculous amount of time in first gear. So then I lowered it to a 38 tooth front uh, chain ring. Now that I've reached the Andes, I have lowered it down to a 34, and I wish I did that earlier. Now, for anyone who's done any cycle touring and spent some time in the hills, it's kind of more important to have the right kind of gearing going up the hill rather than on a nice flat or a downhill section. For example, with this 34 chain ring, about 35 kilometers an hour is my kind of top speed pedaling. With the 38 and the, the 40, it was kind of going up to about 40 kilometers an hour. So I've lost a little bit of the top end speed, but if I'm already doing 35, kilometers an hour or faster I'm probably going downhill or I have a nice tailwind and I don't really care to pedal any faster if I'm hitting that speed so if you're spending time in the mountains I'd recommend 34 which is the lowest setting that roll off the manufacturer of the hub will allow you to use uh, any lower than that and you will void the warranty now another advantage of roll off that not too many people talk about is not only does it have a long life, but the chain rings, the rear sprocket and the chains have a long life. For example, this chain here has about 8,000 kilometers on it. The rear chain ring 
has about 8,000 kilometres on it. This front chain ring is only relatively recent. It, it only has a couple of hundred kilometres on it now that I've reached the, the high Andes. Of which, right now, this was my campsite last night and it's at 3,700 metres. So it's 3,700 metres. Very thin in air and let me tell you, having a lower setup is really good for this sort of stuff. All right, rims and tyres. I am running the Andrea rims with the CSS coating, which basically means that I get very little wear and tear um, on the rims. But it does mean that I have to use a special type of brake pad here. And because that's not necessarily available in places like Ecuador where I am right now, I make sure I carry a spare. But having said that, this bicycle has 40,000 kilometers on it. I have only replaced the brake pads once. Now I'm carrying spares with me and they are due to be replaced pretty soon but that gives you a kind of idea of what kind of wear and longevity you can get out of these kind of rims and these sort of um, brake pads. Now another thing about these rims I have not even broken one spoke yet and I have only had it out of true one time and I'm not an expert at truing the rim. I just took it to a bike shop. They trued it. And to get 40,000 kilometers on the sort of terrain that I'm traveling on and not break any spoke, not too, people, not too many people uh, go through that. Tires. On my first tour, I was using the standard Schwalbe Durhams. Now, they have been superseded. They don't exist anymore. And right now, I'm using the Schwalbe Marathon Mondiales. They're pretty popular for people traveling a lot of time on very rough roads and they want to get the maximum amount of puncture resistance and longevity out of their tires. There's some advantages with that and disadvantages. Firstly, they have quite a, a, a solid kind of sidewall, so it doesn't absorb the bumps as well as some other softer tires do. But these tyres right now, this front has maybe 5,000 kilometres and the rear tyre has about 4,500 kilometres and I'm probably going to get a total of about 10,000 kilometres out of these tyres. I have split the sidewall on these before and I've sewed it up with some heavy duty thread uh, mainly because expensive tyres and I'm a tight ass. On the front I'm running the Son Schmidt Dynamo now, um, I am using that to run my Edelux light, which I almost never use, but it's there in case I, I do need it. I will use it and I will turn it on if I happen to be riding in really heavy rain or really thick fog. I want to be visible. I don't want anybody to use an excuse that they didn't see me if I get hit. Um, I also, now basically just down here, I've just kind of strapped them on when I'm not using it. And I just plug that in, I can use it to, uh, to generate electricity. And I also use the, the hub to generate electricity to charge a USB cable. Now I'm running the sine wave revolution, I just plug my phone into their GPS or an external battery and it um, will charge. Now as long as I'm going faster than about five miles an hour, eight kilometers an hour, it'll charge. Any slower than that and it doesn't. The disadvantage of going so slow at that sort of thing, if you're trying to charge your phone, it will try, it will actually lose charge because it'll turn itself on and off and on and off if you're going slow. But doing any faster than eight kilometers an hour and it'll charge your phone, battery, anything like that. Sine wave revolution, love it, highly recommended. I'm running just the standard uh, Diori Shimano brakes. Uh, I replace the brake cables about every sort of, I don't know, 10,000 kilometers or so. They are pretty cheap to replace, but yeah, they work all right. A couple of other things. I'm running a rear light here. Once again, I don't ride too much at night time, but I really want to be as visible as I can at night time and a rear mud guard, nice for stopping water flicking up. I 
wish I had a front mud guard on this. I used it for the first two tours and at the very start of this tour, um, it stopped mud and everything flicking up in my face. If I'm in rainy conditions right now, um, this basically flicks everything up and it lands all over me, uh, which is not real fun if I'm going through horse poo. Mm. Brook saddle. This is my second Brook saddle. My first one broke when I was in Alaska on this tour and I was in the middle of nowhere. I couldn't really do a repair or anything like that. So I replaced it with a, uh, um, goodness, what was it? There we go. That's the name of it right there. And uh, it worked well, but 40,000 kilometers, it was time for another one. This one has maybe 5,000 kilometers on it and it's got the nice shape of my butt on it right there. Pedals, Shimano, flat pedals. I don't like being clipped in. I used that on my first tour and realized when I was walking around in my cycling shoes that I was clicking and clacking everywhere. When I was walking through the Louvre Museum in Paris on the whatever sort of marble floor or whatever it is, nah, I use flat shoes. That way I don't need to carry one pair of shoes specifically for cycling. I can use them for hiking and all sorts of things. When it's hot, I cycle in sandals. When it's cool weather like now, I cycle in my hiking shoes. Another thing I love and highly recommend is a rear view mirror. There are a lot of cyclists who don't use it. It has probably saved me twice. And the situation is, I'm going down the road. I look in the rear view mirror, there's a bus or truck behind me. I look straight ahead, I see a bus or truck coming towards me. And I'd rather get off the road live to ride another day rather than be some sort of arrogant cyclist that says the trucks should get off the road, which they should anyway, but I'm still here and I'm still cycling. And I'm using the Ergon grips here. Uh, these are my second set of grips. The first ones lasted about 35,000 kilometers, 30,000 kilometers or so. Um, basically on my second pair. These ones have uh, the, the, I don't even know what you call those, but yeah, the little bar extensions. I actually rarely use the bar extensions, so they're not as necessary as what I thought. All right, considering I've done 40,000 kilometers, what has gone wrong and what kind of maintenance have I done? Now, roll off hub, every 5,000 kilometers, I change the oil. Now, I have a leak in this. Um, so basically, by the time I get to the end of the 5,000 kilometers, there is no oil to drain out and replace. So I just put in the cleaning fluid and basically it's only the cleaning fluid and whatever junk in there that, uh, that comes out. So 5,000 kilometers, change the oil. Chains and chain rings, I'm getting about 20,000 kilometers out of, or should I say I could get about 20, I've been changing about every 15 or so. Um, bottom bracket down in here, I got about 30,000 kilometers out of that. Most people are getting about 20. Some are getting more. Steering bearings up here, I replaced after about 30, 35,000 kilometers. Some people are getting a lot less than that. Some people more. Tires, 10,000 kilometers or so. Um, I swap them around a little bit. Because I do not have much weight on the front, my front tire tends to last substantially longer than the back. I could possibly get 20,000 kilometers out of a front tire if I didn't rotate them. People running front panniers and with more weight, they'll get possibly a little bit less. Other maintenance, make sure this seat post gets greased uh, at least every year or two, otherwise, it will rust up and it will not move. So just take it off, put a little bit of grease like in the seat post and stuff like that. Same with the eccentric bracket. Uh, make sure you take this off and grease all the internals in there. Otherwise you, you, you'll come up in the situation which I've had twice now where the grease just dries out and it seizes up. 
and I've had to like turn the bicycle upside down, undo the adjustment screws and put a whole heap of like WD-40 in there to, to, to uh, unscrew it. And the other bits of maintenance, I got 30,000 kilometers out of my roll-off cables. Most people just change them whether they need to or not after about 20. I did it at 30. They hadn't broken, but I got 30. Most people say 20. Same with the shifter here. The shifter, it basically had just worn out. You get enough sweat and grease and goodness knows what on your hands and eventually it just gets, it just wears out. So I just replaced that. And that, that's pretty much it. Oh, another thing, uh, I've had to, you can see here, I have had to replace the little uh, electrical connections on here a couple of times. One little disadvantage of the, the um, USB connector that I have here, the sine wave, is the cable's actually a little bit thin. So if you're not so careful, like I'm pretty rough on my gear, so if you're not careful like me, sometimes you'll pull it off when you need to change, take the front wheel off if you get a flat tire, and you might just break the thing like I've done there. That is the Thorn Nomad. I highly recommend this bike if you want to do long distance stuff. If you only want to do weekend or a week long trip, there's probably a lot of lighter, cheaper bicycles that you can use. You want to cross continents? This is the bicycle for you. Now, on the next episode, I am basically going to go through lightweight gear, and gear setup. So hit the subscribe and join me for that and see the kind of lightweight gear that I'm using, which is about 20, 25 kilograms, which is a lot lighter than most people use when they live on a bicycle like I do. Okay, adios.